Hello viewers, I'll be honest, when I first took a look at this week's Daily Race C, Watkins Glen Group 4, I didn't think this would be a fun race. The tyre wear and the fuel is actually quite low, and I thought, you know what, this is actually going to be quite dull. But how wrong I was. I did the race three times, one of which was a disaster admittedly, but the other two were amazingly good fun. Let's jump into the first one. Here we are, starting 15th on the grid out of 16. Nine long laps of Watkins Glen in front of us, and 14 opponents with one guy immediately behind, as you can see there. The Citroen giving us a nice little bump draft to proceed the race. So for a bit of context and a bit of understanding about this race, it is a nine lapper with the requirement to do one pit stop. And uh, the cars with good tire wear will tend to do quite well on this race as the tire wear sets about five times. You don't have to change the tyres in the pit stop. Most people weren't. Ideally, if you chose a good car and drove it correctly, you wouldn't have to change your tyres. And that would save you a bit of time. Quite a lot of people choosing the Alfa Romeo 4C, myself included, as it is very good on its tyres. So we gain a position there, but also at the same time lose one, and therefore remain in 15th. But we've got plenty of time to try to do something about that. Heading through the penultimate corner, heading into the final one, you see the Citroen in front is going to head into the pit lane. It's quite an awkward pit lane entry here, as you have to remain quite slow on the inside line of the final turn. Moving, therefore, straight up into ninth position. There are quite a few people going to the pit lane at the end of lap number one already. So we're going to stay out, just try to bridge this gap to the group in front. And it's really a race of minimizing the time loss this guy on the right hand side you might spot there in the wall has already visited Barry R or the Shadow Realm one of the two and that is not a good way to minimize time loss as we now move up into eighth uh, the guys in front a nice little battle between them as we head into the final sector of the lap We're only 5.7 seconds off the lead and this was the beauty, I think, of this race. It tended to play out as a very close race uh, from the front of the pack to the to the rear of the pack. And Group 4, you know, it, it really depends on the tyre wear and all of the factors that play, you know, the track, the tyre wear and the fuel. However, with this race, it just seemed to all fall into place. It really is a good one. I really have enjoyed it. So heading through Turn 1 beginning of lap number three now into seventh position I'm gonna get into the slipstream now of the Citroen they're gonna defend not really although it's a drag race now heading into the chicane I've got the inside line not quite the track position yes we do eventually get it over the bump really carrying the speed through the chicane as best as possible moving up into my customary sixth position and that's a pretty good return we started 15th Let's not forget, though, of course, a lot of the cars have pitted already. And so we are in a direct battle between us and them. You might be able to spot them on the radar, or sorry, on the map on the top right of the screen. Half the cars have already pitted now and are a little bit further back on the map. But we are going to lose our time when we go for our pit stop. Gaining one more position there from the Aston Martin. A couple more at the end of lap number five here, when a few more guys go into the pit lane. So now up into third place. We're going to go in at the end of lap eight, so we're going to leave it as long as possible. I think the strategy when it comes to when should you pit largely comes down to if you're in traffic, if you're, if you're going to get held up behind someone, and it's probably worth just, uh, just going into the pit lane instead. And there's a chance of that happening here. This Nissan GTR must have had a penalty, served it, and is now right in front of us. Ideally, we don't want to get stuck behind for another lap, or two laps possibly. And so, if he doesn't go into the pit lane, then I will. But it looks like he's going to keep to the right-hand side, so I'll stay out for another lap. It's quite awkward having to go around the outside of someone who is going into the pit lane, and I definitely lose a little bit of time every time that happens. But now, hunting down the leader of the race, in second, the leader 1.4 in front on the uh, in the Toyota Supra. That was a very close call. In fact, it was so close that it definitely was a penalty, a one-second penalty for 
going over the curb on the second apex there. And that was a little bit too egregious for myself, trying to cut too much time down. And we're going to lose a lot of time as a result. The Toyota Supra, as you see in front, not very kind on its tyres. So that, that car is quick. In fact, it's, it's pretty much the quickest qualifying car. But in the race, it really does fade away towards the end when its tyres, especially the front left, begin to drop off. But later on that lap, we're going to head into the pit lane, end of lap number eight, hunting down the lead. So we're in a good position here. But could that one second penalty be quite costly? It actually probably cost me about two seconds of actual time. And that could be crucial here as we exit the pit lane. It's going to be really close with the cars already on the track. We're going to get overtaken here by the Veyron and another Alpha. They're so back down to eighth place. And I think without that penalty, I'll be right on the back of that Supra there up in fifth. But this certainly is not over yet. We actually have a very exciting finish coming up because that Supra is really on its last legs. The front left tyre is going to be dying by this point of the race. You can see the Alpha actually has very good tyre wear and I've still got plenty of life left in them. And so we can fight with two hands. That Supra has got one hand tied behind its back. Trying to do its best. The Veyron? Not sure. That's a bit of an enigmatic car to me. I've not given it a go but I have no idea how good its tyre wear is. It seems to be performing okay. As we head towards the last half of this final lap Things are going to get very close indeed. As the Supra, you can see, struggling big time on the exit of this corner. This long right-hand corner. Lots of long rights on this track, which will really kill your left-hand tyres. I'm going to try to move to the inside here. I've gained one position against the other Alpha. Looking up the inside, Supra turns across quite late. We're going to have to back out for now. And he's going to keep the position side by side now with the Alpha that comes back through. It really is all kicking off now. The Alpha goes up the inside, smashes into the back of the Supra. I'm going to try it around the outside. Luckily, I'm not pushed wide into the grass. And I get enough momentum to move up into sixth place through the penultimate corner on the final lap. Only one corner remaining in the race. I try to put this guy off. And then into the final corner, he goes into the corner way too hot. Smashes into the wall and ends his race prematurely. <laughs> oh, P5, come on. He went into the freaking pit lane entry. We had to get a bit aggressive there on that final lap, but I will take fifth from 15th. I then set a qualifying lap in the Toyota Supra. This wasn't the best lap ever. I could definitely go quicker, but it was a 52.5. And in the intro, I spoke about having a disastrous race, and I'm going to quickly cover that disastrous race here. I mean, we just saw how bad the Supra is in terms of tyre wear, and I'm driving it here. Now, the guy behind me, just so happens to be Killian Dumont, former world champion of Gran Turismo. I managed to keep him behind for an entire lap, which was quite an achievement. Until I made this very stupid mistake, braking way too late, going into the back of the Russian player there and driving wide on the exit and ruining my own race and his race. As I touched upon earlier, this race is close enough without making mistakes like that. But then it wouldn't have mattered anyway because I had zero tire life on that front left. I was actually getting hunted down. Miraculously, I started this race 13th. I was somehow in 12th, and this is top split. So somehow I've moved forward despite all these mistakes, using the wrong car, managing my tyres incorrectly. But you see just how much I'm struggling for this final corner. It came very close to overtaking me back, this guy. But I thankfully managed to keep 12th just at the end. So that one could have gone a lot better. But this race, wow, this one was really special. Really enjoyed it. So let's go. This time starting 12th on the grid, we've uh, we've whipped out Scott Speed from storage. Scott Check is back in the building, ladies and gents. So we're over on the US server, or the America's server, should I say. And we're going to give this a good go. Once again, the Alpha, this, this tended to be my favorite car there are different choices you can really have this race i think the corvette works well i think the citroen works well there's, there's a handful of cars which work well the mclaren as well is decent but the alpha for me was the one i wanted i've got a nice little bump draft here from behind from the cayman porsche cayman driven by hellsfire and that was enough 
to launch me up the inside into the chicane, up into 11th position. We understand the nature of this race now, really preserving the tyres as best as possible, and then just timing the pit stop as best as you possibly can without losing too much time in traffic. But up behind Cyrus there, he's driving the Toyota 86, which tends to have issues with tyre wear, so that's a good handling car, but tyre wear wise, not the best for this race. But um, I must reiterate again just how close this race tended to play out. Lots of people in very close quarters combat, and that's a, a reason why I really enjoyed it. it. Tended to play out very well, and Group 4 isn't my favourite category in this game, and therefore, for this to be my favourite race of the week was really saying something. Uh, that's quite rare for me because Daily Race B this week is a Group 3 race. I probably always gravitate towards that, but that was not the case. Uh, so through the penultimate turn, drinking game for penultimate. As we head into the final one, see the two cars in front, the Supra, driven by the Canadian, and then Cyrus in the 86, both going into the pit lane. And so we're going to move up into the top 10, up into ninth now. And it's a, it's a weird battle dynamic. I mean, we have direct battling against the guys right in front of me. But we still need to make sure we don't battle too much and lose time against those who have just pitted because we still are going to have to factor into their battle later on in the race. And so it's one of those races where you have to try to race consistently, smoothly. And if you are going to go for overtakes, you need to get it done swiftly without much time loss. It really is about minimising the time loss. If you're going to lose a second by overtaking someone, sometimes it's probably best just to stay behind and not lose the second. And then just wait for a time when you can actually get the overtake done with more efficiency. So into the toe corner. Very tricky turn, this one. And you've really got to release the brake into the camber to release the speed and maintain your speed through that. Up behind the Corvette now, driven by Michael. Looking to the inside bit of uh, argy-bargy between the cars in front. Michael leaves the door open for the assault. And we're going to put our car up the inside and, and take the position and take another one as well. A double overtake. We're moving now up into seventh. A nice little double overtake. Moving through the pack quite swiftly, as we just mentioned. Got to do it. Protecting the position there into this one as I felt like I got a poor run on the exit. Just ran a little bit wide into the grass. Now I decided... Because I was battling a little bit too much here, I thought, you know what, let's go into the pit lane and rejoin Cyrus towards the back of the pack. Once again, not opting for new tyres. We don't really need them in this car, given how OP it is on tyre wear. On the exit of the pit lane, we are going to get overtaken by the Supra um, of Langloy, who goes through. Cyrus has actually lost a bit of time there. He's a good couple of seconds behind, so I'm not sure what happened in that intervening lap on lap two. He must have had a fight or a mistake or a penalty. He's dropped back slightly. But the crucial element for me now is to try to remain in the slipstream, at least, of this Super. The Super is very quick in a straight line. You see here, I got very fortunate to not get a penalty. That looked incredibly similar to the penalty I got earlier. But, thankfully, it was not a penalty so we can continue a uh, bit of a moment there for the final turn just losing touch with the Supra and remaining on the fringes of Slipstream or at least the stronger element of the Slipstream where you need to be kind of towards half a second behind and he has a bit of a moment there car's coming out of the pit lane this is the exciting moment I do love these races when there's a pit stop and you can see someone coming out of the pit lane you're wondering am I going to get ahead who's going to get ahead Mustang and the Corvette behind, both side by side. And eventually the Corvette has the momentum and gets through. I managed to stay quite close here. The Alpha does have better handling, I would say, than the Supra. The Supra is a very good car for this race, there's no question. But as this race goes on, it is going to begin to wear out, wear out its tyres, as we mentioned. Especially that front left, it really doesn't like it around here big corners like this one coming up long right handers it really just kills the left hand tires they begin to die of death it's one of the worst ways to go they're dying because of death it's, it's pretty bad but that front left is going to feel it no question into 
final turn, lap number four, just dipping that front left wheel into the grass on the way in. Now, thankfully, uh, Carvalho here, this Brit uh, Brazilian driver behind, opting to work with me. And this was really good. This was um, quite a refreshing thing to realise that this guy was very uh, welcoming to teamwork. Super in front, driving quite wide on the exit of turn one. That is going to be a penalty. Let's take a look. Yes, it is. There it is. And therefore, this is quite a crucial moment. Uh, the remainder of lap five up until the penalty line. Let's try to get close to this guy so that when he serves the penalty, I can have a free overtake. We actually go purple there in sector one. So we had a good exit out of turn one. Goes and does a massive slide through the chicane, which is a sub-optimal line. That's good for me, as we can now pull onto the back of him down the hill looking for that 200 board on the right hand side breaking in towards the apex releasing the brake and then on the power as early as you dare running wide onto the curb as uh, we look behind the corvette again this guy was really willing to work with me and it was really good because i've, I've said it multiple times already you want to minimize time loss therefore fighting unnecessarily is really just going to kill your race both of you so the supra serves his penalty the mclaren in front you might have spotted also recovering from a penalty so we've gained maybe half a second here or a second on the brazilian in front in the lovely green 650s and so now up into ninth we still got quite a few cars from the front of the pack to go into the pit lane and therefore there are still plenty of positions to be gained here but let's not forget we started i think it was 12th on the grid so only three positions gained at this point but uh, plenty will change from here to the end through the final corner a little bit wider the apex and very close to barrier on the exit just trying to pull into the slipstream range now of this mclaren uh, which will certainly help on this long back straight here at watkins glen on the exit of this turn you're on full throttle for a good 20 30 seconds so it's quite a long time still via coming out of the pit lane they used to be an incredibly strong car now take a look at this a time gap from myself to the car in front this is the benefit of teamwork once again the corvette behind just bump drafting me up the straight pushing me pushing me pushing me all the way and as a result we've both gained about four tenths or at least three tenths there in one straight alone and um you know we could have instead had a fight and he could have gone up the inside and we both would have lost time but this is really good for the pair of us. We're both making really good progress here towards all the cars in front. He believes in my pace and I trust him to bomb draft me. So this is a, a rather fine and unexpected coalition between Britain and Brazil as we catch up with another Brazilian. And in fact, my good friend there in the Corvette has actually got a penalty. And therefore, he's going to drop off here slightly. So we're going to have to wave goodbye to our good friend for the time being. But perhaps we can form... We could reform our alliance later on. The Supra behind with a bit of a gap. Now, definitely closer to the back of the McLaren. Three laps remaining in the race. A 53-7 lap time there. You need to get into the 53s ideally. As this guy goes a little bit wide. Is that going to be a penalty? I think it is. I'm not going to go for the overtake here. We'll bump draft him instead. There is the confirmation of the penalty. And we're going to have a very strenuous moment here as we head onto the back straight he is going to move over to the left it's going to be a drag race but this is always a contentious moment on the circuit where you're both heading into the chicane he he does have his wheels ahead but he's on the outside he was going to fight that every day of the week and i felt like you know what i'm not going to go into a stupid crash here we're going to back out you can have the position because we're going to gain it from you in just a moment as he does have those penalties so that was quite a close call there could have definitely have gone wrong it's really easy to lose control of the car through that chicane but oh yeah in fact we don't actually even need to wait for the penalty line because he makes a bit of a mistake there loops up the inside and we're going to take the uh, uh, fifth position away this race is really developing nicely we're moving forward we're not getting the penalties and um, things are positive well I say that I think I might have just curse myself because on the exit of this turn look how close this was i mean this one must have been a pixel i really felt like my right hand wheels were just about on that curb clearly not stewards did not agree 0.5 second penalty being dished out and so this comes at quite an awkward time in the race 
as we are approaching the time when the top guys are going to be pitting. And this happened in the first race, you know, getting a penalty just before that moment of the race, it can be quite crucial. So this lap now is an important one. I need to try to bridge as much of a gap as I can to the cars behind so that the penalty does not have as much of an effect. Ideally, if I can pull out a good gap now, then we can stay in fifth place. And then at the end of lap eight, the top four are yet to pit, so they are going to go in at the end of this lap, and then we'll see what position we will be fighting for on the final lap. They're coming down towards the toe once again. An ultimate lap now. Look at that 200 board. In fact, you're breaking pretty much on the 100 board. I don't even know what I'm talking about, but the 200 board doesn't really feature in a Group 4 car around here too much. It actually break incredibly late. Moving over to the right-hand side to serve the penalty. The Super goes through. Now Cyrus and the Corvette are back in the, ge in the, in the game here. And into this one, we have understeer. And I do just run Cyrus a little bit wide there into the extra tarmac. I was never going to let him go around the outside and have the inside for this left-hander here. And so now right up behind the Supra, he's got a penalty in fact. The top four go in, so it's a really exciting moment here of finding out what position we're going to be fighting for on the final lap. Good final turn, the Supra. I mean, he's done a good job here to have the Supra towards the front as I know how bad it is on tyres. He's, he's going to really struggle through all of the right-hand corners, of which there are many on this circuit. And we've moved past a couple of cars here, now fighting for third place. So our podium is on the cards. We started 12th. Now third is a distinct possibility, but it certainly is not over yet. The guy in front has a penalty, but the Corvette is coming back at me. Heading up the hill onto the final straight, onto the back straight, sorry. It's going to be three abreast. Look at this on the radar, bottom right of the screen. Three abreast here. This could end in tears. Thankfully, sensibleness prevails, if that's a word. I don't think it is, but it is now. The sensibleness of the other drivers was uh, something to be applauded. And we all get through there alive with half a lap remaining. Can we keep our call? The Supra has dropped down into fifth. That's not what he would have been wanting. Uh, at this latter stage of the race and for now it's a case of not getting a penalty and trying to get to the end of the race without any uh, any stupid mistakes this corvette behind has been really stalking me very closely and he has been working with me throughout the majority of this race it's been a really good alliance between the two of us but there's every chance now given it's the final lap that he will go for the move and ditch the alliance i mean who can blame him it's all about racing now um, as it is only a quarter of a lap remaining we've got the car nicely under control the Alpha 4C is definitely my choice for this race it is such a good car on its tyres and it is a pleasure to drive it in Group 4 but we're going to come through the final corner it is going to be a podium for Scott Speed on his return and this was such a satisfying race I really enjoyed it Wow, that was really enjoyable. This race surprised me, I must say. I didn't expect it to be this fun.